Hey Nunchbags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and I'm back. Before I get into today's review, I'd like to take a very brief moment to give you guys an absolutely genuine thank you. If you're not aware of what happened in the last month, I'll kind of get you guys up to speed. Uh, so basically, after the death of Chester Bennington, I kind of took uh, blame myself in a lot of ways, uh, feeling like a bully as a critic on YouTube, and I'd go to uh, sit down to do a review, and I just, you know, couldn't stop shaking and feeling like uh, the words that I was saying were really tearing people down, and I, I really felt like I needed to be in the uh, in the correct mindset to start doing album reviews again, and I was absolutely overwhelmed by the amount of support and, and love you guys showed on that video of me uh, kind of explaining through that situation. Enough that I almost wanted to dive right back into doing reviews again, uh, but in the back of my mind I knew that I had to be in the right mindset for it, and therefore I did take that time off, and it has been, I think, uh, roughly a month uh, since the last time I did a review, and I'm really excited to be back. I'm ready to uh, cover some of these recent albums that have come out, stuff that I'm really excited to do. Obviously, I'm going to be very behind, and there's going to be a lot of things I'm going to skip out on, uh, but the really important albums and everything, I am still going to cover. And you know, I figured what a better way to return than to cover an album uh, that you guys have been requesting for a long time, and an album that I've been uh, wanting to cover personally for a while. This LP also celebrated its three-year anniversary just earlier this month, so I figured what a better time to cover it than now. Uh, the album that I'm referring to, of course, is the debut album from Porter Robinson, Worlds. Worlds placed number one on my top 10 albums of 2014 video. Uh, the first video I actually did of its kind, I, I did that video before I even started doing reviews at all. So obviously that video was very uninformed and not very descriptive. Regardless of that, Worlds still reigns as by far my favorite LP of 2014 and debatably one of my favorite uh, albums of this last decade. At one point I might have considered this LP to be my all-time favorite album. I don't know if I can entirely go to that extent at this point because that's a spot that really, really has to be earned, and this album does have its flaws in places. But to say that Worlds holds a special place in my heart would be a complete understatement. I love this album. I still enjoy the heck out of it three years later. I've got to say, one of my most prized possessions has to be this limited edition CD copy, uh, the pre-order of Worlds, the album. I think a, a certain amount of them came with an autograph. I happened to snag one of those because I pre-ordered this album, I think, uh, within like 30 minutes of it going up. Uh, this is my baby, absolutely, and then I've got a vinyl copy as well. If you guys don't remember, that was part of the vinyl wall of fame, so that's there. But you know, what makes this album so great, really? What makes Worlds a special album? Because I specifically remember a lot of critics took kind of negatively to this thing back when it first came out in 2014. I think a big part of what makes Worlds as special as it is is that it wasn't really trendy for its time. In fact, Porter Robinson started a trend with this album, and a pretty incredible trend at that. That's been going on for years to come and is still going on today, where EDM producers are looking forward past the boundaries and stereotypes of being drug-induced dancing and jumping music and pushing into art music. And even if every track on this album isn't necessarily a 10 out of 10 song, that's not necessarily important because all of this is accomplished just within two tracks, of course those being Fellow Feeling and Sea of Voices. Sea of Voices as a single laid the groundwork for easily one of the, the strangest and most bizarre album promotions I've ever seen in my 20 years of life. As you should already know, Robinson was known for his distinctive brand of Electro House, which he named Complextro, and a lot of producers kind of followed in that vein uh, after him, but when Porter came out with Sea of Voices, everybody was caught off guard. Being the first single off his major label debut album, uh, this song's release made very little sense. The song wasn't poppy in the slightest, it wasn't some kind of insane EDM anthem. It was simply this beautiful little interlude piece that would retain its luster for years to come. In fact, I've only seen a couple producers kind of successfully imitate the sound uh, that Porter Robinson was going with Sea of Voices, and that was Paris Blom with his experimental rework of In Your Eyes, and Juventa with his alt mix of Superhuman. Those are the only two songs I have ever seen kind of even come close uh, to the beauty and luster that the song has. So like I said, that song laid the groundwork for a very strange album release, and then we got Fellow Feeling on album release day uh, that completely turned everything on its head. Some critics, I'd have to say, uh, notably
notably Anthony Fantano, completely missed the point of this album largely because this song tended to get ignored by those critics. Sure, it's kind of dressed up as an EDM banger, but that's not really the point of it. Hear what I hear, A Woman Speaks, as Porter Robinson takes listeners through a journey of what Complextra music has become to him, just repulsive and disgusting. Robinson cried out in this song for people to understand his departure from Electro House, and I feel like in large part that kind of got ignored. Perhaps Fellow Feeling would have been better suited as the first track on this album, kind of providing listeners with a bit of a more smooth transition from the more harsh sounds of Spitfire with his uh, Complextro and Bro Step sounds uh, to the more dream poppy style of Worlds. Of course, then that might have slightly altered what made Divinity such an awesome intro. In fact, I will never ever forget uh, the first time I ever listened to Worlds and uh, just hearing that vocal chop on Divinity come through. I was amazed within like the first 10 seconds of this album. And Divinity still reigns as by far one of my favorite songs in this album. I love how the, the first drop of this thing is very centered around uh, those vocal chops, the second is definitely more around the chords, and then in the third one those kind of meet head to head uh, in this combination. One thing that definitely was interesting about this album though over the years uh, with my taste in it is that my favorites have kind of radically changed with the exception of Sea of Voices and Fellow Feeling kind of remaining my two favorites. Uh, and mostly because of their artistic standpoint that they're trying to take. Um, I've seen a lot of the other songs kind of kind of change for me. Uh, when I originally listened through Worlds, Lionhearted was by far my least favorite song on it, and now that's probably closer at the top, uh, kind of taking that indie rock sound, kind of combining it with a little bit of an electro house beat, that kind of gritty synth. I, I still like that song quite a bit. Uh, on the other hand, I've seen songs like Sad Machine really fall off the list for me. Not to say that this song wasn't special to begin with, I mean it's literally Porter Robinson doing a duet with a computer, and that's still pretty cool to this day. It's just the lead melody of this song I have gotten so sick of throughout the last few years, and a lot of that is thanks to Porter Robinson's live shows where he seems to incorporate Sad Machine into practically every song. It's a good song, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I feel like Porter Robinson himself and his fan base tend to worship this song a little more than it deserves. I think there's a lot better songs uh, just in his regular discography, as well as this album too. I personally would prefer the kind of gritty, distorted nature of songs like Fresh Dad now, uh, paired with those bright, happy overtones uh, with the Vocaloid rather than Sad Machine, which just is so candy sweet it gets a little bit tiring throughout the years. Or Flicker, which once again kind of has those distorted undertones, but then is complemented by these cutesy little Japanese anime vocal chops. I think though a main takeaway with Worlds is that each song on this album kind of has its own unique elements to them. Even if the vocals on these tracks can be a little bit generic in some cases, uh, i.e. Urban Cone and La Metro, all of these tracks can easily be identified as Porter's music, and I have never heard an album quite like Worlds either before or after this album's release. Even if you can hear different sounds kind of being picked and pulled from Robinson's different inspirations, uh, MGMT, Passion Pit, Owl City is especially a good one, uh, considering he literally used Brianne Duran uh, from Owl City's live band a couple times on this album, you know, you gotta give the guy a break. He poured his heart and soul into this album and tried to make it as unique as he possibly could. I mean, the outro to this album, Goodbye to a World, is an electro house song written in 6-8 time, and if that wasn't enough, he kills the computer. And sure, this album can be a bit messy at times. It's hard to see whether Robinson was really trying to go for a more story-oriented album with uh, the computer only showing up in three different tracks, or whether he's trying to focus it on this radical change in sound, or like whether he's trying to tell listeners, like, art music is the way to go set behind the dance music because he's going for so many different concepts with this thing, but I think they all work together to make at least a fairly solid album. And kind of what I was saying toward the beginning of this video, what's more important than the music itself of Worlds is the impact that it made. Not only did it inspire countless amounts of other artists to leap past the bounds of EDM, but it single-handedly changed the perspective of thousands of dance music listeners like myself uh, from just seeing EDM as this kind of jumpy, happy dance music uh, to being an actual art form, and I will forever thank Porter Robinson for that, uh, because without this album, I probably would not have started doing reviews. I absolutely cannot wait to see what Porter Robinson gives us next. I've really loved the content he's put out uh, between Worlds and the present day, uh, so I have high hopes for album number two. And for the rating, well, Worlds gets a 9.5. I know a lot of you are going to be disappointed that I didn't give it a solid 10. 
Uh, but I've never given a solid 10 to an album on this channel, and as much as this album probably deserves it over any other album that I've ever uh, reviewed, I just can't bring myself to do it. So uh, a strong 9.5 it is. Uh, I love this album. I still do, and I, I'm sure I'll still be listening to it for years to come. And if you guys, for some reason, haven't listened to this album, uh, of course, I have the Spotify link down in the description below. Guys, it's good to be back. It's good to be doing reviews again. Um, and then expect some uh, new reviews coming of actual new albums. I'm not planning on only doing uh, throwbacks from this point. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this review of Porter Robinson's Worlds, an album that uh, deeply impacted me, and I hope, I hope uh, if you have listen to it yet that it will be able to impact you guys in the same way. I love you guys. Thank you for the support and I'll catch you later. Peace.